today's topic will be on trauma from occlusion. So here in this uh, video, I'll be discussing about the definition, classification, as well as the various stages of tissue response to increased occlusal forces. Okay, so before going to definition, I'll just, uh, I would like to discuss about some terminologies. So which is nothing but occlusal force. So what is that? Occlusal force is nothing but a force which is exerted on the opposing teeth when you just clench your tooth. So when this occlusal force is, is going to exceed the adaptive capacity of the uh, supporting tissues, injuries result. So this injury, you'd call it as trauma from occlusion. And the occlusion which is causing this injury is called as traumatic occlusion. So next coming to the classification of trauma from occlusion. So uh, according to Glickman, he classified it uh, according to the duration of the cause as acute TFO and chronic TFO. So first let's see about acute TFO. So when does acute TFO happen? It happens in cases of any abrupt occlusal force. Okay, which means that you're biting on an olive pit or uh, there is some restorative or prosthetic appliances which is interfering or altering the direction of the occlusal force. Okay, so this is acute TFO happens during these conditions. Next coming to the symptoms. What are the symptoms will you ex uh, experience? You will have tooth pain, uh, sensitive to percussion. Okay, then the tooth will be mobile. Okay. And they also say that there will be appearance of something called cemental tears also. And now, if the force is dissipated by just a shift in the position of the uh, tooth, this acute TFO can subside on its own. Okay. But then, if it still prevails, then it could lead to necrosis and periodontal abscess formation or else it may go into a symptom free chronic TFO condition. Okay. Now well, let's discuss about chronic TFO. So chronic TFO occurs when there is a gradual changes happening in the occlusion. Okay. Whereas first one would be tooth wear. Okay, this is the first one, tooth wear, which happens in case of any parafunctional habits like bruxism. Otherwise, there is a unreplaced missing tooth. Because of that, there is a supraerupted tooth or a drifting of the tooth. Or the next cause would be uh, that orthodontically, sir, the tooth have movement has been done to a functionally unacceptable position. Okay, and then also with the presence of a high filling, there is alteration of the uh, forces of occlusion. So these all can lead to a chronic TFO. So next, depending on its nature of cause, they can be divided like classified into primary TFO and secondary TFO. So now let's see when does primary TFO occurs. Primary TFO will occur due to excessive occlusal forces on the normal periodontium. Okay, here you could see the normal bone, normal gingiva, but there is excessive occlusal forces and that's why a TFO occurs. Then you call it as primary TFO. So next, when do you call it as a secondary TFO is that there is a marginal periodontitis and bone loss and there is normal occlusal forces only uh, will not, the, the, non, the periodontium could not withstand or sustain the normal occlusal forces. So that time you call it as secondary TFO. So next coming to the stages of tissue response to increased occlusal forces. So you have three stages in that. First stage will be stage one injury. So we all know that when occlusal forces um, uh, is been uh, excessive occlusal forces has been uh, happening, injury could occur. Yes. So under force of occlusion, the tooth rotates at the fulcrum or the axis of rotation. So this uh, for a single rooted tooth, the axis of rotation will be in between the middle and the apical third. Whereas for a multi-rooted tooth, it will be between the interradicular bone. Okay. And this creates 
a area of pressure on one side and area of tension on the other side and depending upon the different degrees of pressure and tension different lesion may occur in these sides okay and also if there is any uh, if the tooth is subjected to any jiggling type of forces which means that forces come from more than one direction that is different uh, lesions can uh, appear in a single area it can coexist in a single area so now let's see uh, there is injury has occurred depending on the different degrees of pressure and tension what all injury will happen in the surrounding supporting periodontal tissues so here first let's go there is a slightly excessive pressure which is uh, given okay so in during slightly excessive pressure we will see about three surrounding supporting tissues first being the periodontal ligament so here just imagine there is slightly excessive pressure in this side so this area i have just zoomed into here here what happens it's been pushed so there is compression of the periodontal ligament fibers okay whereas the other side that is slightly excessive tension side you will experience elongation of the periodontal ligament fibers okay in the bone if you see there would be resorption of alveolar bone and whereas in the tension side you will have opposition of alveolar bone okay this is opposition of alveolar bone whereas blood vessels if you see they will be numerous these are the blood vessels numerous but they are reduced in size whereas here the blood vessels will be enlarged so these are the lesion which will occur in case of slightly excessive pressure and slightly excessive tension now let's see what happens in a when a greater pressure is given when a greater pressure is given first what happens in the periodontal ligament we'll see okay here again there is going to be compression of the periodontal ligament fibers followed by which a area of hyalinization forms and then due uh, when this occurs what happens you will have connective tissue cells and fibroblast in the periodontal ligament all that will undergo necrosis okay so this happens in periodontal ligament whereas bone is concerned resorption occurs and also they have uh, seen that tooth resorption also occurs next coming to the vascular changes okay first uh, within 30 minutes of the greater pressure there is going to be stasis of the blood flow okay then in 2 to 3 hours you could see that the erythrocytes is getting packed and then they get fragmented then when you go to 1 to 7 days there is going to be disintegration of the blood vessel wall and leakage of the blood vessel components okay these are the vascular changes now let's go to the when there is severe tension on the other side what happens in the pdl if you see there is going to be elongation of pdl fibers and tearing of the periodontal ligament you will have thrombosis yes and hemorrhage which is happening in the periodontal ligament and also in case of bone there is resorption okay next let's see the pressure is so severe that the tooth is just pushed to the alveolar bone when this happens what happens is that the bone and the tooth comes in contact so there is necrosis of pdl as well as bone and as far as bone is concerned they say bone resorption happens uh, that is this necrosis of pdl happens no there will be some viable periodontal ligament near it so from there bone resorption can happen otherwise from the marrow spaces in the alveolar bone okay the osteoclast uh, will uh, migrate and there would be bone resorption here so this resorption you call it as undermining resorption because resorption is actually occurring on the underside of the lamina dura okay so this is the next one so now we have finished off the stage 1 injury stage we are going to stage 2 which is repair stage we all know that know that when a injury happens repair takes place okay because our body tries to repair that injury so here uh, what happens to the bone we will see there is going to be bone opposition 
okay the most important term which you want to uh, learn in this stage would be buttressing bone formation the buttressing bone formation can be divided into central buttressing bone formation and peripheral buttressing bone formation in central buttressing bone formation what happens is that uh, this blue thing is your periosteum and this is the endosteum okay this endosteal layers will start depositing bone which will actually um, uh, obliterate the marrow space that is it will just lessen up the marrow space and there will be trabecular bone will be deposited by these endosteal cells so this is central buttressing formation when it comes to peripheral buttressing formation they say that the peripheral buttressing formation takes place in the facial and lingual alveolar plates okay uh, either they will uh, form a shelf like thickening called as lipping or there will be bulging of the contours of the facial and lingual side okay so this would happen in peripheral buttressing formation now that we have learned about stage 2 also and also one more thing uh, i would like to say is that in the pdl what happens they say that it will start depositing something called a cartilage like material and the erythrocytes will also deposit crystals in this stage next coming to the stage 3 which is nothing but adaptive remodeling of the periodontium so we all knows that a uh, injury happens the body will try to repair it so the injury is getting so excessive so what happens a periodontium tries to remodel itself that stage you call it as adaptive remodeling so in this stage if you see there will be widening of periodontal ligament and a funnel shaped at widening at the crest an angular bone defect the tooth will become mobile here and there will there will be no periodontal pocket okay these are the adaptive modeling remodeling which the periodontium does so next in the last i would like to discuss histometrically okay this uh, the stages of uh, tissue response to increased occlusal forces uh, depending on the formation and resorption i would like to discuss histometrically first in stage 1 repair if you see there was lot of bone resorption which was taking place but bone opposition was less whereas when when it came to repair what happened there was less bone resorption but there were increased bone opposition the bone started forming right then in the stage 3 both the formation as well as the resorption return back to a normal